The country is in dire need of workers across almost every industry. Duncan Garner looks into the proposed job insurance scheme. Duncan, can you tell us a bit more? I mean, it's it's only proposed, but mm. you think the government is going to push this through? Oh, they've, they've, they've made it quite clear. As in the past week, um, Grant Robertson has turned up to business groups, you know, to audiences where he said it, and, and I've heard it myself, where he said that the legislation is being prepared. So when legislation is being prepared, it's being prepared for the House to, to be pushed through. What the detail is, um, it's, it'll be pretty similar to what he's already proposed. So I actually think it was a con, the whole thing. I, I thought that this idea that that it was a proposal uh, was incorrect and we were being conned. They were out there hiring staff, um, designers for the scheme. Uh, they put $60 million towards it in the last budget. Who does that if you're not going to go ahead with it? Who puts $60 million towards a new scheme if you're only in a proposal stage? These guys were well advanced. Uh, and you have to be because it's you know it's quite a complex um, it's quite a complex process. But they were they were hiring staff and and putting allocating money in a in a, in a budget round to something that was only a proposal. Very rare, mm. isn't it? Very unusual. They did have the public consultation that closed in April. Mm. Do you think they had much pushback there? Oh yeah, they, they they wanted to. They have actually. Yeah, they have they have had. Oh, I've been through some of their submissions. Yeah, surprisingly, you know, some of the unions you think that would be on on board aren't. Uh, Salvation Army, not. Um, because it takes it takes uh, 1.39% of workers' income. So if you're on a low income, if you're on a high income, 1.39, you won't notice it. If you are on a low income, you'll notice that. It's it's significant enough to make a to, to make a um, to make an impact. Yeah, it is a tricky one because it's the lowest paid who are the most vulnerable and mm. would actually benefit from a scheme mm. like this, but they're the least able to lose more of their paycheck. Correct. Is there any alternative that you can see? Uh, no, because or just don't go ahead with it. Uh, because at the end of the day, if, you know, when low income people, uh, low socioeconomic, lose their jobs, we have. Um, system set up for that. We have the unemployment benefit. Uh, we have emergency benefits. We have emergency housing. Um, not much of it, <laughs> but we do. Uh, we have um, uh, people have contracts with employers as well, and redundancy clauses and so forth. I I wonder here if we're looking for a um, we've got a solution, and now we're trying to find the problem. And the problem doesn't exist. We've got a tight labour market. We're looking for workers. There's not widespread job losses. Skilled workers are hard to come by. We can't get them into New Zealand. We can't create them here. Where's the where's the problem? This government waxes lyrical about low unemployment. It's it's, it's been low for a long time, and 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 stubbornly low, which is a good thing. But where's the high unemployment? Where, where, are, the, where are the mass redundancies? This is what it's designed for. We could still be heading into a recession, and the worst could yet still to come. Yeah. Is it worth it to just lose a little bit of your paycheck each month to ensure against job losses? It depends what you believe is the government's job. Um, is it the government's job to? become a, a private workplace insurer. Um, we've got plenty of them out there. They line the streets around where we're doing this interview right now. There, there are insurance houses all the way through here. Why would the government do it? I mean, it's an uh, individual's choice. The other thing is, individuals who have workplace insurance or job insurance, uh, they will be forced to do this as well. So they'll have two schemes. Do you think they'll get paid out to us? Well, well, arguably they will because they have two schemes. Why would you need two workplace schemes? Uh, the whole thing to me is, as I said, it's a solution looking for a, a mass problem, and the mass problem has been identified as a strength of the New Zealand economy, which is we're employed. Mm. I did see that the proposal was supported by both the Business NZ mm. and the Council for Trade Unions. Yeah, they got conned. <laughs> they, they usually oppose each <laughs> yeah. other, so mm. well, what do you think this signifies? Well, National said they'll repeal it, mm. and I think there was a lot of disappointment among some um Business groups that Business New Zealand did this and did it almost by stealth behind the scenes. You know, this is what Grant Robertson did. He went out there and he got the two sides and he said, Look, we've got a mandate. Um, we well, won't be in there for long because if National gets into office, it'll go. Um, it's a tax grab, 2.77%. Uh, when employees have to pay this, do you think they're going to include it in their bottom lines? So when you go for a salary increase, they'll say, Well, I'm only paying 1.5 for your job loss, so uh, there's 1.5 off. They do this every year. It's, it's cumulative. Over 10 years, you could have $35 billion in there. It's $3.5 billion a year of, of wages that goes into a fund. Now, if there is another mass pandemic and everyone loses their jobs, it'll look master in mind, won't it? But uh, I don't know. I, I think, it's, I think it's, it's a tax that the government said it wouldn't introduce, which was no new taxes. It's a tax. And what likelihood do you think that this is actually going to get enacted into law? 100%. 100%. It's going to go into law. Now, um, 
when it's enacted is a different question, but it, I, I think they'll try and pass this before the election. I think a number of these controversial things will be passed before the election. You can see it in their timing. That's why they've already allocated money. It's why the high, staff are already employed. Um, but they're doing this because they may not get another chance. So this is why they squeeze it through. They've got one year to get it in. It will take all that because you have to go through you know, parliamentary readings and so forth. But this will be law by the next election. If it's not, it'll be close to. Duncan, thank you very much for your time. You're welcome.